Hey there, everybody. When you come back, I'm going to turn this to this right here on Little Bit of Everything. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Richard. Little bit of everything. Welcome back. As you saw by the opening, I'm going to be building a pergola out on our patio. Now, this pergola, I purchased it at um, Sam's, and it is the Backyard Discovery 14 by 10 All Cedar Delray Pergola. Um, I'm going to be doing um, kind of a time lapse type installation. Uh, the instructions on this are really, really good. Um, so it's really kind of redundant for me to walk through every single step. But what I will do is kind of show you my method uh, about how I'm going to assemble all this, put it together, and the different steps. When I run into interesting things, I'll stop the video and the time lapse and show you. Um, I've got a couple different interesting things I'm going to be doing once the pergola is installed. I'm going to have a new lighting package that I'm going to put out. That'll be a separate video. Um, I'm going to be building some really interesting um, whiskey barrel baskets that are going to hold the poles that the lights are going to string on. So I'll show you that video as well. So both of those are coming on once I get this pergola video released. So this is one of those things we've been looking forward to all winter. And so what I'm going to do uh, to start this off is I've got a Four Seasons room at the end of my or the back of my house here. And the pergola is actually going to sit on the outside of that. To get started today, I'm going to be removing all of the uh, wood that is in these three boxes. Believe it or not, this, these three boxes contain enough wood to build this, this pergola. But I'm going to be taking all the wood out of here and organizing it inside of that Four Seasons room so that I can uh, take parts out and construct them out on the patio once I'm done. Once I have everything removed from these boxes and transported down there, these boxes are so heavy, so in order for me to do this on my own, I can only do a little at a time. But once I have everything in there, um, then the next step is going to be for me to clear off the patio, clean the patio off. I have an umbrella that we purchased last year when we bought the house, which is a very nice umbrella, but I have to move it. And the base is 250 pounds. So I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to do that, but stay tuned and I'll show you what I, uh, I come up with as far as how I'm going to move that. Um, Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you on a time lapse because I'm going to take these boxes apart, open them up, take everything and haul it into the other room. Once I have everything in there, then we'll talk about what my next steps are. So stay tuned and we'll get to it right now. So yeah, it's time to get all the parts and pieces uh, moved into the Four Seasons room. And as you can imagine, it's these boxes are really heavy. They're eight foot long, uh, well over 200 pounds a piece. One of the things that I did want to show you here is every single one of the pieces in these boxes has an identifier stamped on it. Um, that is the uh, number that's provided to that piece so that when you do the uh, building of these parts, uh, it'll call out certain numbers. You know which numbers you need to use. Uh, you see those rails there? Those, those are part of three pieces that are used to build the slats that go across the top. Um, and those are scattered throughout all three of the boxes. So that's another one of the reasons why I wanted to put everything together in this Four Seasons room so I knew where all of the parts and pieces were. Uh, just made it easier to, um, you know, make sure that I knew what I needed when it come time to build stuff. So with that being said, it took me about uh, 30 minutes to get all the parts down here. So we have them all in here and it's ready to go to the next step. Okay, this is everything. All three boxes laid out here against the wall here in my Four Seasons room. Um, and some of you very, very observant folks might have noticed that I've got little post-it notes above each section so that it identifies what that section is based on the number that's on the, uh, the actual wood itself. I didn't feel a need to identify the posts. But, um, so that'll help me when, it's, when, when it tells me to take a D6 and attach it to a D5. I've got it all laid out here. You guys might be wondering and asking yourselves the question, why am I bothering to put all this inside this Four Seasons room? Um, two things. One, um, I have absolutely no idea how long this is going to take me and whether it's going to take me two days, three days a week, I don't know. And we have the chance for rain uh, a couple different times this week. So 
just to keep everything out of the weather, I decided to put it in here. And yes, I do know that this pergola will be outside and it will be in the weather. The second reason is, and that has a lot to do with the notes that you see around here. This helps me organize all of this stuff over here at this table. And I'll bring you over here and show you this. So this is all the hardware. Um, this is an electrical box that goes onto the back of the post up by the wall so that you can run electricity in and out of this thing um, so that you can run your lights and stuff like that. Very, very useful. And all the rest of this is just hardware. I got some uh, really, really long lag bolts. I'm assuming those go through the posts to hold the, the, the beams together. Tons and tons of different bolts and literally hundreds of screws. So that's gonna be fun. And then these are the bases that the uh, posts sit in. Uh, they're kind of that plastic so that it, the, the wood doesn't sit directly on the ground. Try to at least um, lengthen the life of your post. So that's good. So that, my friends, is all of the hardware. So now I'm gonna put up on the screen all of the tools that you're gonna need for this. You're gonna need a cordless or electric drill. Um, it says drill attachments, Phillips head. Um, you might uh, need a couple of those. Uh, open in wrenches, a half inch and seven sixteenths. You're gonna need four different drill bits, an eight, three sixteenths, three eighths, and seven sixteenths. You're gonna need a three eighths uh, drive socket, or drive ratchet, sorry, half inch and seven sixteenths sockets, half inch and seven sixteenths deep socket. A tape measure, a claw hammer. This has a Phillips screwdriver. Um, that's just probably for holding one side when you are trying to turn the, the, the nut on the other side. This shows a square, a level, and the rubber mallet as optional. So the next step is clearing off the patio. I have that table to move, everything out there. I've got to move that umbrella, as I said in the intro, and get, it all, get all of that cleared out. And then after I'm done with that, I will start the assembly of the pergola in here on the floor, laying everything out. Um, and since I'm going to be doing this by myself, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that shows you how you can do these types of things by yourself. Um, there might come a time or two where I might need my wife's help, but for the most part, I intend to try to do this on my own. So with that, uh, let's get started on clearing the patio. So the main purpose obviously was that umbrella. That was the thing I was worried about the most. I wasn't sure how I was gonna move it, uh, but getting the table out of the way and getting the patio cleared off was secondary to trying to figure out how to do that. But the funny thing is, once I wrapped the strap around it and I began to tug, it moved across that patio with no problem whatsoever. So it turns out I was worried about it really for nothing. Okay, everybody. Sorry for the lighting in here. It's morning. Sun's beaming in. It's kind of hard to get all the lighting right. But anyway, as you can see, I got the patio done. You can see I got some tables set up in here. I'm going to try to do most of my construction on these tables, and then I'll be moving it outside once that's done. Um, what I do want to show you really quick before we start is a couple things about the instructions and then we'll get started with putting this stuff together. Okay, so as I said early in the video, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time going through each one of these steps. I'm just going to put a time lapse on and then I'll stop the time lapse if there's things that I need to show you. But the, the reason for that is these instructions are really pretty good. As you can see, each step, there is a picture of what you're actually building and then the areas that are important as far as what you need to uh, put screw wise where has a blow up here and it shows you exactly the numbers of everything there are special notes to make sure you get your orientations right like this one is telling me to make sure that the uh, to only hand tighten the corbels to the beam um, in some instances like here it indicates to uh, note the orientation of the holes on the beams so you're not putting this thing upside down anyway Great instruction so far, has all the part numbers up there at the top. Sorry about that. Has all the part numbers there at the top. Um, shows you exactly what pieces you're installing. One thing I wanted to tell you real quickly is they do have, um, if you scan this with your phone, you can get actual voice uh, uh, led instructions that show you exactly step by step on how to put these things together. This built is an app that they there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of installation uh, videos on there and it's kind of like um, a CAD viewer and you can rotate the view so that you can see what you want to. I think it would be really cool for people who you know may not have a lot of confidence in doing this kind of thing. I have no problem following the directions here, the, the written directions, but I just wanted to bring that out. It's good for both uh, Mac and uh, 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 Samsung or what have you phones. So uh, anyway, 
good little tool. I did download it. I did watch the video last night. It was really pretty cool, but um, again, I'm, I'm going to follow the instructions because that's what I'm used to doing. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. I'll stop the time lapse uh, and give you some kind of updates and things like that as we go along. If there's anything interesting I think you need to know, we'll do that too. So let's get started. All right, so it's time to build the beams that run around the perimeter, the 14 foot and eight foot beams that support uh, the, the roof of this and tie the posts together. So that's what you're gonna see me building here in the next few minutes. And then I'll stop a few times along the way to give you some uh, hints and tips of things to do as you're building this. So I thought I would just show you in every instance of these corbels, they use these nuts that have these little barbs on them. Uh, and it requires a hammer to set these in the wood. So I made up a little station here where I can hammer these in. Um, this is what the bolt screws into from the other side. And as you tighten the bolt, it sucks these more into the wood. But in order just to hold them in there, I temporarily tap them in. And every one of your corbels, so there's eight corbels on here, and every one of them get those nuts like that. Okay, so I thought I'd show you this real quick. Every single one of these screws, I don't know if you can see that, has one of those star um, divots in it. So that's normally something you would use an Allen wrench for. But I have this kit, I bought it on Amazon. I know not everybody has this, but it has all these bits that accept one of these adapters. This is an a quarter inch adapter, and that'll go right into my screw gun. And then that way I can use that to tighten these rather than having to use an Allen wrench. But you can get these at uh, any hardware store. Uh, I think um, Harbor Freight has them really, really cheap, but I'll leave a link to, what I, uh, to this kit that I bought on Amazon below. So this is kind of funny. This is the first video I shot doing any of the installation of this pergola. And right away I make a mistake. Those corbels are supposed to be on the same side of the board. Notice how I'm stalling the other one on the other side. Well, that's not right. So here's a quick tip I learned uh, years ago. If you're working by yourself and you need things to, to stay steady, take a clamp that has a long arm on it. You can see now that this thing will not move over because it's got, a, it's got this lever on the, on the table. I did it over here as well on the opposite side. This has kind of got a two-fold uh, use. I'm using it to help stabilize but I'm also using it to hold the boards together so that I can get the other one attached. So I'll be utilizing clamps like this all throughout this build as I put this together by myself. Uh, clamps are a great way to have an extra set of hands uh, when you need them. So I'll show you some of the other tips that I have with clamps coming up as I start putting this together. Okay, I have the first stringer and corbels attached to the two posts. Uh, this will be the outside. <laughs> couple things I want to make uh, sure that you know when you're putting this together. When you lay these stringers and corbels on the ground, make sure you orient them so that the corbels are on the inside. So when I first came out here, I had laid it on the ground with the corbels down and the stringer on the inside. And when I attached them, obviously it was incorrect. So I had to undo them, reattach them. I just didn't pay attention to the instructions when I was doing it. So I've got this one oriented on the ground with the corbels on the inside. I'm gonna go get the other posts and attach those. And we'll have the, uh, we'll have the short sides done. Okay, so I have the first set of beams and corbels attached to the first set of posts. And so here what you see me doing is doing the second set. And, and again, if you had some help, this might be just a little bit easier. I kind of had to lay down on the ground, uh, lift these up, and put these uh, bolts through, and then position the post on them, and then just hand tighten all of those, uh, all of those bolts because uh, you don't want to tighten everything down because you want to be able to uh, make adjustments uh, to get everything down. But once I was done with that, it was then time to go into the shop or into the green room and put together the long 14-foot uh, beams and corbels. Um, it's really the same process all the way around. Everything that you put together, um, you, you put together the same way using those uh, nuts, nut certs. At least this time I was able to do it correctly. Okay, sorry for the wind noise. I thought I'd get you caught up. Um, I have all of the cross members done on both sides, laying on the ground there, laying on the ground there and up in there. I've been at this now four hours. But I wanted to show you a couple things. Um, when you're doing things by yourself and you need things to stand, 
You see how I got those boards clamped at the bottom of each one of these posts? So that's providing, um, that's providing support at the bottom of the post so that they won't fall over, which they actually did once and I had to catch it. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoot them into the proper orientation on the patio and then I'm going to hang these cross members across there. And then I have another little trick I'm going to show you for when you have to do that by yourself as well. So what you see me doing here is measuring the long beams so I can get these posts positioned correctly. Okay, so here's the other little trick. You notice how I have that uh, piece of wood uh, clamped up there. That's going um, to that's gonna be a, another hand to hold this board when I slide it up. I've got the other one on the other side as well. So I'm going to lay that board across those. I have a clamp sitting right here. So I can clamp this board onto that and hold it down while I go ahead and put the screws in this side. And once I have the screws in this side, I will adjust my width because I'm sure it's not perfect. So that's the next thing I'm going to be doing. So yeah, this tip that I just showed you is something that I've used for years in a lot of different uh, applications. Uh, using clamps to hold things up while you're trying to get things positioned and basically what I'm doing here is the measurement was pretty close to where it needed to be and I'm just making some final tweaks and adjustments before I start driving the screws through uh, and it worked brilliantly I didn't have any issues whatsoever uh, getting everything positioned you see me repeating that same process here for the back beam that's going up um, and everything went through exactly the way it was supposed to so had no problems there getting everything installed. This was really actually probably the easiest part. And now what you see me doing is leveling each one of the posts in its final location. Okay, the pergola base is done. I've got everything completed on the outside. I've gotten all of the uh, bolts that run through everything tightened. I went all the way around and leveled every one of the legs. Uh, this patio does slope from back to front so these sides are, are a representative of that but both the back and the front are completely level the legs are completely level so um, I've gotten everything done out here now there's a few pieces that I have to go put together inside I'm gonna go do that and then I'm going to call it a day for today and we'll get started again in the morning after I get a couple things done inside Okay, so it's time to build the inner joists now, and again, they are built the exact same way as everything else. And you see there's that little notch at the end that's cut out? That locates it on the beam. There are six of these, they're built the same way, pretty easy to do. I want to say a quick word about these washers that they use here. Uh, they do tell you in the instructions, but these are actually directional. You can see there's barbs on one side and it's flat on the other side. Those barbs go in toward the wood. So um, just a little thought there, when you're working on these, make sure you're putting those washers on oriented, oriented correctly. So this is just more of the joist construction. You can see I'm pounding in those nut certs that uh, go in each and every one of them. There were six of them to build, so it was really rinse and repeat of what I had done before. Every single thing that you put together is put together the same way. So they use nut certs and bolts. So again, the process is really easy. Just follow the instructions, orient things correctly. You will have no problem putting this together. Hey everybody, that's the end of day one of the pergola build. As you saw, I got the entire base uh, set and leveled and everything tightened down on that. Um, I got the six uh, posts or six um, slats that are gonna go across the top to support all the mini slats that are gonna go vertically uh, across there. I think there's about 15, 18, 20 of those I have to build tomorrow morning. Um, for those of you keeping track, not quite six hours today, five hours and 45 minutes. Uh, got quite a lot done. It really wasn't that bad. If you had some help, you could probably get this whole thing done in a day. Um, I did kind of have a couple goof ups and I'll talk to you about those at the end. Um, interesting things that I did, some things that I come across that maybe will help you when you decide to build yours. So um, anyway, that's it for today. Uh, when you come back, it'll be the next day and I'm going to get started in the completion stage. I should have everything done in a few hours. So thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to day two of the pergola build. So originally this morning, the plan was to get those six beams that I'd finished working on last night installed, but we had a cold front come through last night. It's only in the 30s out there, <clears throat> so I'm not in a hurry to get outside to do that. 
Um, so what I'm going to do instead is the next step after installing these is to build all of those uh, smaller slats that are going to go vertically across the pergola. Um, and there's 18 of them and it's three pieces for each one. So I'm going to go ahead and build those. Hopefully by then it'll have warmed up a little bit outside and I can go ahead and get everything installed. So that's the next step. I'm going to put you on a time lapse. I'm going to put those together and then we'll get outside and we'll get everything installed. So I think that's the plan. Hopefully it'll warm up a little bit and I won't freeze my butt off out there. So right out of the gate, there are 18 of these slats that need to be built and there's three pieces for each slat. So there you go, 54 pieces to deal with. I think it ended up taking me about 45 minutes to put these together. Okay, I wanted to stop the time lapse for a real quick second. I wanted to show you something. So I have, I'm putting these nut certs in this center hole uh, on this half lap board. You can see that it's cut out half lap so it'll overlap the other piece. And the nut cert is there to accept the screw that comes through. And what's happening is on a couple of these, again, this is a half lap. As I'm trying to tap these in, I had one split. So in order to stop that from happening, what I've decided to do is I got this board here and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put that half lap over that board and put that nut cert in, tap it in, and that way I've got support for that lap so that it doesn't split again. So. Having 36 of these to do, I wanted to make sure I didn't split any more of them. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to stop and show you that real fast. With all the uh, long slats done, it finally warmed up enough outside to get out and start getting these center beams put in. And this was a really, really simple process. If you oriented your boards correctly, uh, there are pre-drilled holes to accept each one of these slats from back to front. And it's as simple as making sure that the uh, slat gets put into the right location and screwing it in from the top. Okay, so technology is so wonderful. I shot some video yesterday um, as you can see, I've gotten a little bit further. Uh, I've got these slats uh, started here. I've got the rest of them up here. Um, and I'm going to climb up there and show you what my process is. I'd shot the video to show you yesterday. Silly me, I didn't check if the audio was working and it wasn't. I've got these slats started on here. Um, I put a trick together that I think makes it easier when you're trying to install these. So let's get up there and let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, let's show you this little uh, trick that I've come up with, and I've been doing this with every single slat, and it started clear up in the corner, and I'll show you that in a second. But you see this block right here? <clears throat> this block represents the exact width. Um, they have pre-drilled holes in each one of these, and uh, that's where the holes start, but they don't pre-drill all the rest of them. So in order to make sure that this gap remains consistent with every single slat, when I put the very first one in, and then I put the second one in, I cut a block that represents that exact width. And every single slot that I put in going forward, I orient that block in there. You see that right here. I orient that block in there so that as I go all the way down the length of this top, every single one of those beams that these attach to, I put that block in there to maintain the consistency of that gap all the way down and I don't have to measure. So that's another little cheat tool. I also have this little bucket. Actually, this is an old trash can and I put all of the screws in there. It fits in here really nicely uh, so I can reach in and get my hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and set this camera up down at the other end, put a quick time lapse in so that you can watch me put some of these in and um, then we should be getting pretty close to being done. Of all the things that I did on this pergola, this was probably the one area where I had the most issue of holes lining up, but it really wasn't that big a deal because you're just drilling screws down into the tops of those beams. So even though some of them didn't line up, it still didn't matter. I got it done. So that was the last four screws up here on the top of this installing this pergola. 
Um, these slats went on pretty easy. As I said, some of the holes didn't line up, but it didn't really matter. Um, it, they all went together. It's all done and completed, and I'm really happy with the way that it came out. All right, everybody. Well, that's it on the installation and the assembly of the Backyard Discovery Delray 14x10 Pergola. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It really was a, a fun project. I'm shooting this outro here on the inside because it's cold outside again. So I'm gonna uh, show you some B-roll of the finished product here of the pergola. Um, I'm really, really excited about how this came together, what it looks like out on our deck or out on our patio. And I'm really thrilled about uh, having this extra, um, you know, this extra shade out there that we're gonna have. Um, just a couple things that I wanna uh, talk about really quick uh, here at the end. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about um, this particular installation is all the leftover hardware. I have a whole table over here and I'll show you uh, a quick flyby of all the different parts and pieces. Uh, with every single package that I opened, there was at least two, three, sometimes four extra parts. Um, I absolutely was thrilled about that. And another thing, at the very beginning of this video, I talked about um, needing some bits for your drill to drill in a lot of these screws uh, that had star tips in them. Well, lo and behold, one of the packages that I found inside has those bits already in there. They have a Allen side of it, and then they also have a bit that goes in your drill. And then they also have uh, a drill bit for your drill to help screw the screws in. So all of that was included in my package. So you, I didn't need that um, that extra box that had all those bits in it that I'm going to actually link down below in the description, but you don't need it because they provided that. Talk about some of my goofs. Um, one thing that I cannot stress enough is orientation, orientation, orientation. Make sure as you're putting this together, you're paying very close attention to the instructions. It's going to tell you where the holes are that need to be orient oriented as you're putting this together. On more than one occasion, I found myself mounting something on something and then realizing that it was upside down because I wasn't paying close enough attention. Go slow, pay close attention to what you're doing and you'll have a lot less problems than I did. I, I screwed up a, a couple times because you'll even see it on the video while, while I'm putting one side of the uh, corbel together, I'm mounting it on the other side of the board. And I'll see if I can't show you that video of that right here. Um, follow the directions, take the time and go slow. Holes on top of the beams. So the beams that go across the top, um, as you're orienting those, make sure that the holes are across the top as you put those together. Um, the post hole orientation. So the corbels, they, they connect um, on, the cor on those corner posts, they connect and there's a pre-drilled hole already there. So if you don't have those holes in the right orientation when you're putting that uh, stuff on the post, you don't have it oriented right. So make sure you're, you find that orientation. So I'll tell you what happened to me. I did it right on two posts and on the two other posts, I didn't. And so I ended up having to drill my own hole to put those corbels on. Um, it's not a big deal, but now I have a hole on the outside where there should be a corbel attached to it. So I said the other one was last, but this is last. The inserts that go in, be cognizant to tap those all the way into the wood before you start putting things together. I had a couple instances where they weren't quite tapped in all the way. And when I went to screw the screw in, that nut insert started spinning and basically just drilled a hole on the back side of the wood. I was able to repair it and make it work. but just make sure those nut certs are tapped in tight before you start and then go slow starting those screws before you put any kind of drill on them. So with all that said, uh, really thrilled about the pergola. I've got some more video coming up because I'm going to have to uh, put electricity on this because we're going to be putting um, lights out inside the pergola and then we're going to be stringing lights across the pool. So I have a project coming for that. Um, so I will have a couple other projects to that. I'm going to be building some speaker boxes um, to put four speakers out here on the pergola. And I'm going to be running speaker wire. Uh, this uh, table that's sitting over here is going to have a receiver sitting on it. And I'm going to be running speaker wire out and around. So there'll be a project for that. So stay tuned for that as well. 
But that's it. That's all I have. Uh, very, very thrilled about how this pergola came out. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please reach out to me. I'm happy to, to uh, talk you through whatever I did. So now I'm going to transition to the faith-based portion of my video. I hope that you'll sit, uh, you'll stay and watch that as well. And don't forget, God loves you so very much and so do I. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time. Hello everyone, welcome back to Faith Changes Everything. I'm Pastor Richard and it's so good to be with you here today. I do hope this message finds you well. If this is your first visit to FCE, welcome to my extended channel. I attach this to my little bit of everything videos just as a way of providing some uplifting messages of hope, of love, and to let you know there's a savior out there who wants to have a personal relationship with you. If you're visiting again, welcome back. I'm so glad you're taking the time with me here today. You know, I created this channel over a year ago because I wanted people to know that through your faith, you can accomplish all things. Faith is at the core of who we are as Christians. Without faith, your ability to ride the waves of this turbulent life will be tested to the point of failure. Faith is a central tenet in what supports us through all the tests in our life. So today's message is all about faith, courage, and the kind of trust that it takes sometimes in our life to totally step out on our faith, to face the giants that are at our door. Today we're going to be talking about one of those best known stories in the Bible and how we can learn three very important lessons from that tale. Today is all about David and Goliath. But before I start the message, I would like to say a prayer about the words that I'm going to speak today and to those that are going to hear these words, that these words bring healing, hope, and comfort. So if you'll bow your head with me now as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, when the problems and the challenges in my life seem as big as Goliath, I will rest my faith in the same hope of this young man, David, who had the courage, faith, and understanding of your strength to walk confident into battle, knowing you were with him. I know that this problem, this giant, whatever it is, may at times feel too big to face or overcome. But I know the reality is nothing is bigger than my God. Through my faith in you, O oh Lord, I will stand firm. I will not back down, Lord. I thank you. Like David and his sling with my feet planted and my eyes fixed on my target, I will give all I have and let my faith and works fly. As I collide with the enemy in front of me, I will rejoice in the Lord that the giants in my life have no choice but to fall. I understand, Lord, that my timing is not your timing, that these giants will fall when you decree it, but my faith is in you with the knowledge that all giants must fall at the feet of my Heavenly Father. This is my truth. This is my declaration. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know the story of David and Goliath? Before we start, I want to give you one simple verse that I am sure <coughs> excuse me, you've either heard or read but if you take time to read it, then stop and think about these words. If we truly believe and, and, and have faith in how God works in our life, this one verse can save us from so much hopelessness, so much worry and anxiety. The verse is Matthew 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. Seriously, brothers and sisters, this verse gives us all the hope we would ever need. To think that nothing is impossible with our God, literally nothing. I mean, that should fuel our hope tank endlessly. I know we lose this vision from time to time, but as you listen to this message, let that verse resonate with you. As you go through your day, repeat this verse again and again through every situation you face today, tomorrow, all week. 
let the true reality of the meaning behind this verse, that nothing you face is impossible, fuel you as you grow and walk in your faith every day. With this verse, it becomes easier and easier to understand the faith and courage that it took for David to face his giant. The story of David and Goliath comes to us from 1 Samuel verse 17. Now, chapter 17 verses 1 through 58 tell the complete story. But I want to read to you from chapter 17 verses 45 through 47 as this is where we find the courage of David. I do, however, encourage you to go read the whole story. 1 Samuel 17 verses 45 through 47. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and I'll cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. Wow, <laughs> what courage this young man had because let's face it, the Israelites were in trouble, big trouble. The Israelites and the Philistines had been in war for some time. The armies of the Philistines had gathered to battle and a giant warrior named Goliath came forward to taunt the Israelites. He challenged them to fight him. When the Israelites heard Goliath's shouts, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Goliath was huge. The Bible says that he was almost 10 feet tall. He also wore a large brass helmet and heavy armor. He had an enormous shield, spear, and sword. And for 40 days, Goliath challenged them to fight. No one had the courage to face him until a young shepherd boy named David came along. David arrived at the Is, um, Israelites' camp to deliver supplies, and when he heard Goliath's shouts, he was surprised to see the soldiers flee in terror. When it became clear that everyone was too afraid to fight, David volunteered to face Goliath. David had to spend some time convincing King Saul that he wanted to face Goliath, and he also said he's going to face him with no armor and only his sling. David was told that there was no way he could defeat Goliath. He was too young, too immature, didn't understand. Yet David knew something they didn't. His strength came from not his body, but from God. David, with his sling, he gathered five smooth stones. And as you can imagine, Goliath laughed at David and mocked him and David responded, that even though Goliath had a sword and spear, he came in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel. David put a rock in his sling and swung one of those rocks at Goliath's head. The rock sank into the giant's forehead and he fell. David then picked up Goliath's sword and used it to kill Goliath and cut off his head. With that, the battle was over. Now there's a lot more to this story and you should, as I said earlier, take the time to read it all for yourself. But the conflict between David and Goliath is where I want to focus this message. There's so much to learn when we think about David's courage to encounter Goliath. David, without even knowing, teaches us several things about courage, about complete faith and never giving up, confidence and confronting the giants in our own lives. There are three things specifically that I want to present to you that I feel like it also teaches us about facing what seems to be insurmountable odds. Let me give you the other three lessons that I take from this message. Number one, the Lord will always be with you. When everyone told David he couldn't fight Goliath, David replied in this verse. 1 Samuel 17, verse 36 and 37. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. 
How many times have you been told you can't do something? David ignored that because he knew where his strength came from. And David told King Saul that he had already been rescued from the bear and the lion. So he knew God was with him. How many times in our life has God rescued us from the bears and the lions in our life? By that I mean troubles or uncomfortable situations in your life. I'm sure there are probably even circumstances we have no idea about that we've been saved by. That day you were late to work because you forgot your badge or your lunch and you had to turn around. Maybe that saved you from some calamity that occurred along the way that day. God is always with us. And David knew that the Lord would be with him. With the Lord we can face all of our Goliaths, our bears, and our lions with confidence. Number two, faith in God brings courage. David went to a nearby brook and found five smooth stones. He put the stones in his bag along with his sling and David then went out to meet his Goliath. When Goliath saw David, he made fun of David's young age. He cursed and threatened him. David, however, was unimpressed, unafraid. He said in 1 Samuel 17, 45, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Think about that for a minute. Think of that courage. Can you imagine the faith it took for David to stand in front of this 10-foot man clad in armor, carrying a spear and a sword with nothing but a shepherd's flock to protect him and a leather sling with five stones he pulled from the spring to defend himself. David's firm faith in the God of Israel gave him great courage. The person standing in front of us might not be 10 foot tall. It could be someone you loved that is mocking you. A classmate that is posting things on social media, a work peer that you thought you could trust throwing you under the bus. It could be a husband or a wife that cheated on you or a brother or sister or even a mother or father that abandoned or betrayed you. It could be financial disaster, a divorce, a death, moving away, recovering from a weather-related loss. Any of these things, big or small, can be our Goliath. That person or thing standing in front of us, making us anxious or afraid or bitter, angry, ashamed, can be defeated with the courage of David, the faith in our Lord, and the comfort of his promise. Number three, with God, you can do the impossible. You probably already know what happened next. David pulled a stone from his bag, put it in his sling. He flung the stone, struck the Goliath's head. Goliath fell. When the Philistines saw their champion defeated, they fled for their lives. This story shows us that our strength does not come from our own abilities or our resources, but from God's alone. David's confidence stems not from his military prowess, but from his trust in the Lord, whom he declares will deliver him from the hand of the giant. With that faith, David did the seemingly impossible. Before this fight, most people would have said, David didn't stand a chance, but David showed, showed that, as I said in the earlier verse in Matthew, when I said, with God, all things are possible. The last thing I wanna say here is about the five stones that David pulled from the stream and used those to defeat his giant. Now, today I've been using David's battle with the giant Goliath to show you that faith in our God gave him the courage to face this battle. And brothers and sisters, I need you to hear me. That same faith resides in you. I wanna leave you with this. You too can pick up the five stones from the stream to help you defeat your Goliath. The Bible is the stream where all these stones reside. In that stream, you will find the obedience of Abraham and the courage of David. 
And the verse in Corinthians 13, 13 tells us, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. With those five stones in your hand, obedience, courage, faith, hope, and love, you have all you need to conquer all the giants in your life. Thank you so much for listening to this message. It's at this time in each of my messages that I want to extend to any of you who are looking for the gift of eternal salvation, the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is the first to put out his hand and offer you this precious gift. I encourage you to reach out and pray with me, asking to receive this gift that is so freely given to you. Romans 10 verses 9 through 11 spells it out. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you're ready to receive this gift, please pray this prayer with me right now. Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead, and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I would be saved. So God, I now say that I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. And that he is alive and well. I accept him now as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept my salvation from sin right now. Thank you, Jesus, for I am now saved. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving me, saving me, and giving me eternal life with you. Amen. If you prayed this prayer today, thank God for your saved soul. Jesus said in Luke 15, 10, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope this message helps you, gives you courage, and allows you to face those giants in your life. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me. I hope that you have a blessed day. And as I always say, remember, please remember, God loves you so very much, and so do I. Until next time.